Good morning. You know who it is. This is Glenn Andrews. Representing that Heroes and Kings as usual. Good hump day to you. I think it's what, 38, 39 degrees? I just posted it up. Uh, starting this day off, up before the sun rise. Getting ready to train a good friend, a good client of mine. I would say it's the reverse. It ain't a client, it's a good friend of mine. Uh, brother I've known for a while. Uh, I, I think I've said it before and I'll say it right here a little bit. Uh, most of y'all know I am a personal trainer. I'm a fitness consultant. I manage gyms. I'm a general manager of gyms. I train trainers, train people. Uh, stepped away from training people for about a good mm, three, four, five years. And luckily I had started back just before the pandemic kicked in. Which, which that was just timely because it just, you know, I was going to step away from it altogether because it just felt like what I was trying to teach, train, coach, and, and teach folks, it, it just, it wasn't getting to them. It wasn't getting to them. And so, oddly, this pandemic is kind of awakening a few folks on the fact that they need to take care of themselves. And so, I'm stepping back into that one-on-one -on -one realm. But I want to say this, I'll post up a lot of stuff about uh, lifting weights, training, eating, because I know this stuff. I've been tinkering around with this stuff for, since Jack LaLanne. And, and even then, hanging out with David York, uh, York Fitness and Ventura, my boy, my brother, uh, Rand, Maurice Francis, uh, Vincent Burton, Marcus Coney back in the day. All we did was tinker with cars and work out and work and go to school and try to figure out what we want to do. And then life take over, you know, uh, wife, kids, jobs, career, and all that stuff. And it happened to me. So when I got out of shape, it was the best thing that could have happened because I don't know if you guys can see. I'm, I'm literally on, on about a, just about an acre. And this little space right here, it was kind of like the, the tipping point. This little space right here, and it wasn't even summer. It was probably about 20 years ago. I tried to, was going to cut this grass, cut this little front spot, and uh, it was probably about 85 degrees. And my body couldn't do it. It, it, was, it felt like I have, it was having a heat stroke. And I was like, whoa. You know, I was, uh, that was like the first time in my life that physically I couldn't do something that mentally or intellectually I was telling myself I could do. And right around that same time, I was making a transition from uh, mortgage banking to supply chain and getting ready to go into grad school. And that's when I had just had a physical and the doctor just laid it straight out. He's like, hey, Glenn, I done seen your waist go from 29 to 39. And I'm going to put you on these blood pressure medicines. I'm going to do all this stuff pharmaceutical wise that you have to do, that you got to do to control your blood pressure and cholesterol. But what he told me, he said, we have to prescribe medicines for folks because 99% of people won't drink water, won't eat better, and they won't exercise. So we have to do our duty as doctors. And I knew better because even when I was in corporate America, I was writing fitness programs for guys in the NFL, Major League Baseball, and a few other folks doing some, some bodybuilding or getting ready for like a, a, a model shoot or a magazine shoot. So I know training. I know how to get the body to aesthetically do what it needs to do and physically do what, do what it needs to do because I've had some uh, guys in the military and law enforcement as well. So once I started my getting back into it, at the same time, Rena was starting to walk, then she's starting to run, then she got fitted for some shoes, and she started getting into uh, short-distance running and then half marathons, and then she got a marathon under, under her belt as well. Now she's up tent, she's up doing half marathons and a little less, like like a breeze. It's, it's, she's found her thing. And so that's what she was doing the same time I was getting back into shape. And so once I started back on it, it I started off small. It was walking, push-ups, uh, ab wheel, slowly tweaking the diet bringing the calories down then it got into understanding macros which is your carbohydrates proteins and fats then it was doing away with soda gatorade kool-aid juices then it was removing sugar then it was removing salt 
Not removing sodium, removing salt because your body needs sodium. And those adjustments were done, I'll say, over about a 15 year period. And so it started off with just little, little changes here and there. And then, as, and you can go through the whole Facebook photos and pictures and just ask me and I'll send you. You see how it changed all the fitness and training stuff I have here at the house as well. Because I, I really like this stuff. I was really into it before. And luckily around that same time, Mason was, was playing football, soccer, the kids was in karate, gymnastics. And then Mason was getting taller, faster. And then he found his niche, which was cross country and track. But he also liked calisthenics. And so... I was watching as he was getting stronger and me and Rena was getting in better shape. It was just coming together. And so I'm saying all this to you all is to put your health number one. Put your health number one because I do all this training stuff. Yeah, to, to take care of myself, look decent in my suits, look decent in my clothes. But it's when I ask my body to do something I know my body is gonna show up. And even more than that, when I put the demand on my body to do something physically, I can put the demand on my body, on my mind mentally to do something. So I don't fear shit. All this foolishness I didn't see, I, I fear none of these fools. Cause they're not, it's nothing but flesh, bone and blood. And that's what I am. And so this discipline to do this every day, Last, I think February, March was probably the first time I didn't do any exercise for maybe a two, three week period because I was traveling is when the pandemic started and I went to go visit my kids and make sure they was good. Let me get this light, this my, my signal light. Make sure they were good. And so that was like the only time I didn't work out because I was just taking care of business. But I've just been doing this stuff every day. Every day I do something for... 40 minutes to an hour. When I was in grad school, I was working, grad school, wife and kids, maintaining a house. Uh, I changed my workout from an hour, hour, 10, 15 minutes to about 30 minutes. I started doing full body workout. I would work out at four o'clock in the morning. I would work out midnight. I would work out three o'clock in the morning. I would work out at nine o'clock. I would work out anytime in between whatever else was going on and getting some rest. And so I know it can be done. I know it can be done. I'm going to leave you with this. And this is what I told some teachers. Me and my good friend, attorney Donald Pollard, we was doing career day. And we were speaking. We was actually there to talk to some kids. And we noticed early in the morning those kids was, wasn't even alert. So we knew, I knew that was about what they were eating the night before. But I ha also had a chance to talk to some teachers and administrators who wanted to get in shape and and. and just really hadn't put it together. And this is what I told those folks. Sunday through Saturday is 168 hours. Sunday through Saturday. Your life isn't Monday through Friday. Your life is Sunday through Saturday, 168 hours. You only need four hours. Four hours to invest in yourself, invest in your mind. Pick you four hours any time out of, out of the week hour on Sunday, a half hour on Monday, a half hour on Wednesday, an hour on Friday, an hour on Saturday. Just pick you four hours for a week. Take you four hours for a week for six months to a year to commit to yourself, to commit to your mind, to commit to your body. I guarantee you, you will feel better, you will see changes, and you, you're taking that first step to a million miles. So that's how I do it. That's how I teach it. Hey, I got a thousand transformations. Most of them I can't see, can't show because most of my clients have been private. I have a few that allow me to show little snippets of of how how I train them, what I do. Uh, I tell you this other piece too. There's the bodybuilding piece. There's the functional training piece. There's Metcon. Uh, there's running. There's calisthenics. There is uh, what else? What else? Oh, and CrossFit. One of the things I kind of incorporate, depending on what the client's goal is, is push, pull, core, cardio. Remember those four. Push, pull, cardio, and core. If you stay within those four, with those four, you, you, you really hitting your whole body. 
and, and the bigger piece, the real, 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 real bigger piece, when you hit your cardio, your core, push, pull, find you four hours in the week out of the 168 hours, Sunday through Saturday, the real thing it does is what it does to your mind. Sometimes it's routine, sometimes it's discipline, sometimes it's pattern, but you're investing and committing to yourself. And eventually, those little small steps become a million miles and, and folks are watching you, especially your kids. My kids have watched me train every day, every day do something. They'll call me, where am I? I'm in, the, in my garage working out, in the room working out, or in the back working out, or at a gym. That's, that's me. And I know I'm a little different when it's, I'm, I love this stuff. But for others, that's what it is. It's four hours in a week, push, pull, cardio, core, pull back on the sugar, pull back on the salt, drink water, small steps. Next thing you know, you didn't go in a million miles. That's my testimony. I'm telling you, it works. I'm telling you, it works. And if you want to go to that next level, that's when mentally you got to understand the difference between discomfort and pain. Because that next level, it's not going to be discomfort. It's pain. But it is possible. I can speak to that as well. So, Wednesday, Glenn Andrews, Hills and Kings. They call me the Sage. They call me Unk. Trainer, coach, mentor, activist extraordinaire. Y'all have a great day. And as I say, ten toes down. Keep it positive. Keep it positive. Out.